practicing today or tomorrow um, and taking a week off. Um, no, obviously being um, sarcastic in the extreme. Um, another great opportunity, really challenging opponent. Um, kind of seems like the uh, level of competitive competition in this league has been um, through the roof. Part of the process when we made this transition was um, it was going to be a tougher league. Um, and you kind of see it's week in and week out. Kind of reminds me of the league that I came from. Um, but another phenomenal opponent, um, Coach Signetti and his staff have done a phenomenal job. A lot of respect for him. Um, a longtime coach, he and his family have coached for a long time, and they've done really good. Uh, when you look at these guys, um, you can see um, a championship culture. Um, I don't know exactly what it is. I think they've lost like four games in the last four or five years. Um, last two or three years, they've been in the um, – one double A national championship playoff picture um, and deep, um, but you can see that they have a championship culture about how they play. Um, never too high, never too low. Um, you watch their game. There's not a lot of guys doing cartwheels on the sideline when they make a play. There's not a lot of heads hanging when they don't make a play. Um, you can see Coach Signetti has done a really good job of building this program the right way. Um, really good against the run. Um, they force you to be kind of. Um, one-dimensional, they, they make you throw the ball um, because they've been really good against the run. Number one in the conference, one of the tops in the country, I believe. Um, offensively, their quarterback, who's a transfer, is doing a really good job. Um, he and number eight have a connection. They're running some RPO concepts. Um, he's mobile enough to create with his feet um, so he can kind of clean up some issues that may happen. Um, and their receivers go get the ball. Um, and Coach Signetti is an um, old school guy that, that I respect and they run the ball play really good defense, um, and, and, and don't turn the ball over. That's, that's the formula for success long term. Um, and they've got that. So we've got to do a really good job of preparation. On the flip side, we have a really good team. Um, so we feel like we match up well. Uh, we've got to play better in some spots. Uh, we've got to be able to um, eliminate some of the mistakes. We've got to be able to sustain the consistency and execution that we have on both sides of the ball. Uh, when you're in situations like we're in where you're missing um, a really explosive player. You know, we went back um, to make myself feel better um, to see if I was still a good coach. And we played two Sun Belt teams last year. We scored 54 points. There was one person responsible for 47 of those points. Um, and I looked around, that person's no longer here. So uh, we've got to be able to recreate um, that explosion, that, that production um, on offense different ways. Um, you can't recreate the person, but you got to recreate what we were able to do. Um, and when you look back over the last couple of games, uh, we've had an opportunity with an extra few days to kind of go back and look. Teams are playing us differently um, because of what we have and what we're able to do. So we've got to be able to take advantage of what we do well and build off of that. Um, defensively, we got to be able to continue to sustain. You know, we're playing really, really good for about three and a half quarters, and there's a handful of plays that we'd love to have back. Um, not that those plays will be eliminated, but we got to be able to bounce back quicker. Um, part of that is we got to play team football. Uh, we've got to be able to move the ball. We got to be able to take advantage of um, defensive stops. We got to be able to take advantage of turnovers. We got to be able to take advantage of momentum swings throughout the game. Um, and we do that through preparation and, and consistent execution. Um, met with the team yesterday, our normal Monday meeting. Team's in a really good spot. We're in a dogfight. Um, they understand it, they, um, they um, embrace it. Um, but we ultimately got to execute on Saturday. And that's the beauty of when you play really good teams week in and week out. It forces you to go through the same routine to be able to execute at a high level. Sometimes when you play you know, games and the competition goes up and down, you really don't understand if you're correcting your mistakes or if you're just better than the opponent. Um, and in these last couple of weeks and in this, um, in this season, in this conference, you're going to have to be able to improve each week. doesn't mean that you go from zero to 100. But you, each week, you got to be able to improve. You got to be able to not um, hurt yourselves. You know, we talked about Marshall beaters. Those type of things show up, and they're magnified when the competition level is equal. Um, so, really excited. Really good week of practice. Really good start yesterday. Uh, we've got a really good plan uh, moving forward. So it should be a really good weekend um, in Harrisonburg. Coach, when you talk about some of those explosive plays last year against Sun Belt, and you're seeing all those return to practice about a month ago. How is his progression coming? When? Um, I'm not a doctor, so I, I don't know. Um, but he is back. He's around. He's going through the protocols that they have him to go through. Um, I, 
I learned a long time ago that the, the head coach doesn't cross the medical line. So when they tell me he can do a little more, and for his 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 sake, right? I don't want to be the coach that oh you got to play because we need you know a touchdown this week. I don't think that's fair. Um, my number one job is to protect the players um, on and off the field, mental, physical, emotional, the whole deal. Um, part of protecting the players is building an infrastructure around them that they can trust. Um, and we have people in all different sectors from medical to equipment to mental health to administrators um, to their position coaches um, that have specialty in certain areas. And I try to empower those people to do their job really well. Part of empowering is trust. Um, so we're waiting until we're told you know, what he can and can't do. Until then, we've got to be able to move forward with the guys that we do have. Um, but yes, yeah, so I, I wouldn't be able to accurately answer that, if that makes sense. Coach, you bring up you know, the Marshall Beaters and how Jay Hughes doesn't turn the ball over. How much are you, is that, are you guys going to focus on that in practice this week? And how much are you going to make sure that maybe you don't get beat by those Marshall Beaters or those turnovers and things that have happened in the past? Well, well part of it, um, some turnovers are created, some turnovers are forced. Does that make sense? Um, if you get hit by a Mack truck, you're probably going to put the ball down if you're not carrying it right. Um, but at the same time, if you, you can't throw the ball directly to the other guy, so there's a little bit of a difference. Um, I think it all comes down to the details, you know, and this discipline in the details. Um, part of those Marshall beaters are penalties. Um, the last game, I know you guys just look at the game and boo um, or cheer. Some of you guys, Chuck, I know you cheer. Um, <laughs> We were driving the ball probably for the first time in that first drive or first couple of series really well. Moving the ball with really good rhythm, doing what we needed to do. We got to a point where we had some things planned and we went kind of, you know, a, a, a low cadence or a false cadence where we had an offensive tackle jump. Well, that's a focus and a detail and attention to detail type of thing. That has nothing to do with the opponent. That has nothing to do with did you make the block or not make the block. Those are the things that we have to control. Obviously, there's going to be penalties throughout the game that you try to eliminate once the ball snaps, but that's part of the game, right? Holding, I got outside of my guy, I didn't run my feet, those type of deals, pass interference, bang, bang, call, those type of things. But before the whistle snaps, it's 100% controllable by the individual. So those type of things we have to be really, really good at because it allows us to put ourselves in ad advantageous positions. Guy jumps offside, well, now it's first and 15. Plan goes out the window. Now the plan is to get back on track. Well, the plan that we had wasn't to get back on track. Um, same drive. We're driving down. Um, Chuck Montgomery jumps off sides. Well, we were about the 30-yard line when that happened. Well, the game changes at different spots of the field. So the plays that you plan on calling different spots of the field, well, now that backs up. Not pointing the finger. We pointed this out in the meeting yesterday. Not pointing the finger at those guys, but talking about the discipline and focus and attention to detail and how something that small, when the margin of error is tight, can really change the, out, out the landscape of that play or that series, if that makes sense. And if you kind of watch, that's been a little bit of our issue at different points you know, in the season on offense. Um, you go back to the games we had success, we didn't have those issues. So we've got to be able to focus on the attention to detail and the little things to eliminate self-inflicting wounds so that we can play against the competition, if that makes sense. Do you think that's maybe like an experience thing, like it's just younger guys that are, you know? I think it's a combination of, um, one, lack of focus. Just I'm so, not lack of focus, like I don't care. More lack of focus. I'm so excited. I'm so ready to play. I'm so ready to go hit this guy that I missed the small detail. Um, I think it's a little bit, um, I talked about this after the game, it is we're, we're pressing a little bit which is a good thing, but also a negative thing. We're pressing because our guys really want to do well. They really want to make a play. They really want to make the block. They really want to make the tackle. The negative of it, when you're pressing, you're getting a little bit out of your natural and a natural normal ability. I tell our guys all the time, all you have to be is be yourself. We're good enough with everybody being themselves to win. When guys start pressing or trying to do more or less, then all of a sudden we have you know voids in our in our communication, voids in our attention to detail, voids in our execution. So we've got to be able to eliminate those things. Part of it is just repetition. Um, I don't know how many times we practice and walk through and talked about that situation. Once we get to this yard line with the third and short, this is what we're doing this week, right? Everybody's got it, right? 
Everybody good? Everybody good? Yes. Let's walk through it again. Everybody good? And you get in the game and you're just a little bit depressed. So, again, not something that's not an excuse, um, but it's just what happens. And if we can eliminate those, it will allow us to do more, which will create a lot more uh, production for us in those areas. Does that magnify coaches the quarterback position where if you're trying to get those guys that are coming specifically to that confidence level he had earlier in the season? Yeah, I, I think I, to, to me, one, um, when you when you are lacking um, explosive players, special players, right? Um, I had a conversation with some guys. Take Randy Moss out of the championship team. And I'm not being disrespectful, but that changes the landscape. Maybe they still win, but I don't know if they win at the rate. Does is, is that, is that kind of make sense? Well, okay, so you take a good player out. Well, that just magnifies everybody else's attention to detail, everybody else's ability to execute. No one else has to grow six, six inches. No one else has got to become, you know, 4'4". Four, four. No one else has got to become, you know, a, a power lifter. But everybody else has got to do their job with a little bit more attention to detail. I don't know if Barry Sanders was a good back or if the Detroit Lions didn't have a good old line you could make the argument either way. But Barry made some stuff right, so those guys looked better. Ali made some stuff right for us last year, so obviously we looked better. Defense is planned differently. Uh, obviously from, you know, the eight yard play that someone may get was a 20 yard play. Looking back on it, how do we still get those 20 yards? Well, we've gotta be able to use things like snap count. We've gotta be able to put us in the most advantageous call from a coaching perspective. Sometimes you got to use snap count. Sometimes you got to use formation. Sometimes you got to use certain things to figure out, well, what is the defense doing so we can make the right call? Barry Sanders out there, just call whatever you want. He's going to figure it out. He'll fix it. Well, we don't have the ability to do that. So from a coaching perspective, we've got to kind of put our guys in the best position. Quarterback gets magnified because obviously he's the one guy on the field that can be the connection between the coach and what we're trying to do and fix a lot of those things. Earlier in the year, we were in a little better position. We didn't have as many penalties. We didn't have as many um, MAs. We didn't have those things. So now the quarterback was able to kind of play with a lot more rhythm, uh, was able to play with a lot more flow, was able to play with a lot more confidence. Well, now we've got to get back to those things so that, again, we don't want to put the weight of the world on the quarterback, but he's also a very um, important piece. I tell him all the time, you're the one guy that can take a bad play and make it great. That's just the, the beauty of the position. Um, you look at the NFL, you know, the ones – Patrick Mahomes can make a bad play look really good. Um, and I'm not saying Henry or, you know, or Cam has to be that. But, again, they're the ones that can fix it. So, from a coaching perspective, you try to put as much confidence around them with the right play, the right structure. Hey, this is what the defense may do so they have a chance to be successful. Don't you guys work together? You, you guys work together? Okay. Check his notes. He asked that question yesterday. Uh, no, but same situation has happened with Gardner Webb. Henry went out. Um, Cam was in. We usually have a series or a time frame where we say, hey, we're going to make a switch and go to this type of play after Henry's run some plays and set some things up. Uh, once he came out, Cam went in and actually took the team down the field. So we kind of stuck with the hot hand. Um, sort of like Garner Webb, different scenario, but sort of the same mindset. Um, expect him to be, you know, ready to go. Unless you know something I don't, please tell me because it's Tuesday. We got to make some changes <laughs> fast, if not. Um, but no, we, we we should be good. Kind of going off of that, how do you assess how Cam's done? I mean, he's gone in there any now and played in the past couple games. Just how, how do you think he's done? Yeah. Um, again, one of my responsibilities. I know you guys don't think so. Um, is to protect the players. And I think we've done a good job giving Cam the experience without exposing him or wrecking his confidence. That's what happens. Everybody's like, oh, well, put Cole Pennington in there. Well, yeah, maybe he goes in and does a great job. Like his, or maybe he does like his dad and throws five or six interceptions. Well, my job is to protect the players because it's a little bit different nowadays. I don't know if when, when Chad threw his six and still won the game, if the fans would have beat him up on Twitter because there was no Twitter. I don't know if, you know, from a mental capacity, if he would have been able to bounce back. So, again, we wanted to make sure Cam was mentally, physically, mostly ready to handle the responsibility of being the quarterback. I think, again, you put certain players around a quarterback, whether they're young or old, 
that can fix some things, a little less pressure. Well, when it's a lot of pressure on the quarterback, we got to make sure we put him in position to be successful so that he doesn't feel like, well, I went in, I didn't do well, and they took me out. Well, maybe that wasn't the case. Maybe it was your two series and it was Henry's two series or whatever it may be. So I think we've done a good job of exposing him to some situations, allowing him to grow. I think he feels a lot more comfortable now going in. Um, the one thing I did tell him, you know, just kind of in our – and, and passing was, I think you can play the game with a little bit more freedom now because he does have some some unique abilities. I think he's been playing the game very, you know, just as exactly what coach said to do, which he's done some good things. But I think his ability, his mind, his understanding, his arm strength, um, he can loosen up a little bit. But that comes with reps. Um, I think he's probably getting more comfortable, um, you know, with the system and with, you know, playing. And, you know, it's his first time playing since high school, really. I mean, he did a little – um, backup duty last year, but it's a lot. It's a lot on a quarterback, um, rightfully so, to whom much is given, much is required. Um, but as a coach, I think it's better to walk a younger player into it rather than say, here you go, go, go to the Wolves, you know, did you do great, did you not? Um, so that's kind of been the, the plan with him. Yeah, I get it. I get it. Everybody was great. Everybody booed Ben. And then when Ben retired, now everybody's booing. I don't even know who they put in now. But I, I get it. I get it. And and honestly, it's 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 a – uh, it's a very rewarding position, but it's also a very strategic position, meaning you got to be very strategic with what you're doing. You know, some of the things that Cam can do, Henry can't do, and vice versa. So even though the plays aren't different, I mean, we don't run a different system when Cam gets in, but we do call some different plays. You know, areas where, um, you know, Henry's really, really strong, um, you know, Cam has strengths in other areas. So we kind of be able to adjust um, until we can get the best feel. And each week it changes. Right, defensively, what they play, the structure they play, their strengths. Um, this week's going to be a challenge because one thing we've been able to do is run the football, um, and that's why we've been in a lot of the games, you know, all the way to the end. Um, because when you run the football, you take time off the clock. Your defense is not on the field over and over. Well, the flip side, this week they're really, really good against the run. Um, so we're going to have to do a really, really good job to be able to still keep our advantage of running the football against opponents versus their advantage of stopping the run. So when you look at that, you mentioned that James Madison kind of forces people to be one-dimensional against them. You look at what Calvin Treat did last week against them, threw for 570 yards, something like that. Is that something you look at if you can't run the ball, do you start to, to look at the options in, in the pass game and try and get something going there with your, with your guys? Well, I think you got to go into the game plan with, you know, hey, what's the most advantageous for us? Um, you know, I, I don't know, I haven't watched, but I would assume um, their, their system is a little more air raid. It's based on the coaching staff. Um, so that probably plays into their wheelhouse. I don't know how many yards they rush for prior to. Um, so we got to look at what's advantageous for us. We can't, you know, flip it around and become air raid tomorrow. Um, but we got to look at what we do well, uh, what, pass, what pass game do we have that complements our run. Um, and what run game can we run and still feel like we have a chance to be successful? Um, you probably got to be a little more patient with the run, you know, against a really tough defense. You know, it may not be as easy as, you know, you roll out there and get four or five yards right off the bat. Um, you got to be advantageous with how you're running the ball. Formations, matchups, um, their D-line is very sudden. I mean, they get off blocks quick. Um, they do a really good job of compressing down with their safeties and linebackers. Um, their linebackers read really well, you know what I mean? So they read the flow and they have good in, uh, instincts and anticipation. Um, so, you know, being able to use their strengths against them and create advantages for us um, is something that we're going to have to be able to do. And then obviously we're going to have to be more efficient in the pass game um, because that's, you know, kind of the area that they force you to go into. Um, their back end does a good job because they know, hey, you know, teams are going to end up trying to throw the ball on us. So they play really tough as well. Um, so it's going to be some opportunities, um, you know, in the past game where we're going to have to execute. And then we're also going to have to be able to run the ball efficiently in order to be, to move the ball down the field. That was easy. <laughs> I thought you guys had a good one. Um, but no, again, appreciate all you guys do. Um, I appreciate all the fans. Um, our players appreciate it. Um, they, they, they feel the love. They understand. Um, yes, you know, we understand the expectation here. And you know, losing is not um, by any means acceptable. 
Um, but learning is what we're doing, and growing is, is what the direction we're in. So appreciate <coughs> you guys. Go hurt.